Between 1942 and 1944, over 25,800 Jews and Roma were held here at the Dossam Barracks in Mechelen. Men, women and children were detained during raids or after tip-offs to the authorities. They had to hand over all their possessions and signs were hung around their necks with a number. Then came the waiting. Days, weeks or even months. Once there were enough people to fill a transport, a train would pull up. Everyone had to get on to leave for an unknown destination. Of all the people sent from Mechelen to Auschwitz-Birkenau, only 5% came back alive. Six million Jews were killed during the war. Such a thing was only possible because many people, Belgians included, collaborated in the deportations. How could it happen? Why the Jews? Did anybody resist? These are the questions to which our museum tries to find an answer. <laughs> Bullying at school. We've all experienced it, even if we'd rather forget. It's an unfair contest because one child has to face a whole group. Bullying is a low-level form of group violence, or so it may seem. But being excluded is terrible. Bullies ridicule their victims and humiliate them. The perpetrators enjoy it. They laugh and feel strong because they are part of the group. The ringleaders enjoy their power, and the others feel like they belong. Perhaps there are some who don't approve, but they keep in the background. Exclusion is a form of aggression that can escalate, generating a spiral of violence. The extermination of a population group always begins with it. Exclusion can be organized by the state, as it was in apartheid South Africa, where black and colored people suffered systematic discrimination. The government met any protest with violence. Between 1880, and 1860, at least 4,000 African Americans were lynched in the United States. The killings arose from within the population. Not only men, but women and children too look on curiously, smiling and laughing. Are they partly responsible for this group violence? <laughs> But the aggression can become even more intense. The tipping point is reached when large groups of people also start to kill women and children. And when the state itself begins to organize mass killings, violence can grow into genocide. The Third Reich had a highly organized state apparatus. Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933 with a program brimming with anti-Jewish hatred. There was an immediate upsurge in harassment of Jews throughout Germany. It culminated in 1938 in the mass violence of Kristallnacht. The Nazis then imprisoned tens of thousands of Jews in concentration camps. The violence intensified even more when the Second World War broke out. 
Mass executions began in Poland and the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941. At first, only men were shot. But soon enough, women and children were also targeted. Simultaneous executions of thousands of Jews became commonplace. It was a dirty job, but a normal one, which was done almost casually. The Germans also confined Jews to ghettos. Life there was horrific. A million Jews died in the ghettos and concentration camps from exhaustion and maltreatment. Another two million were shot dead, and some three million were gassed at extermination facilities like Auschwitz-Birkenau. Children are bullied for being just that bit different, for being overweight, for having red hair, or dressing differently. Jews, too, are just that bit different. They have their own identity, and often their own religion. A person's identity has many parts. You're a man, a woman, a child, a European, an American, an Australian. You're Christian, Muslim, Jewish. The Jewish identity has been met with hostility for centuries. That's what anti-Semitism is all about. This medieval statue represents the Catholic Church. She wears a crown and holds a chalice and a staff. The other woman is blindfold. She has no crown and her staff is broken. She represents the synagogue and thus symbolizes the Jewish people who did not recognize Christ and rejected him. The Jews were to be blamed for Christ's death, and the disciple who betrayed him was called Judas, which simply means Jew. Here, a Jew nails Christ to the cross, even though historically the executioners were Roman. Ludicrous stories were told about the Jews, that they spread the plague, that they were child murderers and performed ritual killings, but where do these stories come from? The world wants scapegoats, someone to blame when things go wrong. Witches were another example. Fantastic tales were spread about them. They flew around on broomsticks. But most of all, they did great evil. Tens of thousands of witch trials were held in Europe alone. Medieval images often show Jews in special pointed hats or else they had to wear a yellow circle. Jews, like witches, were accused of every imaginable crime, especially at times of plague, famine, or war. Some were burnt at the stake or were driven out violently. Understanding grew from the 18th century onwards that all people deserved to be treated equally. The French Revolution in 1789 led to the formal declaration of the rights of man. Discrimination against Jews was banned, and they became free to practice all professions. But anti-Semitism didn't go away. The fantastic tale simply took on a new form. Whereas in the past, Jews had been accused of spreading the plague, they were now said to be involved in international conspiracies and financial fraud. The story took root in the 19th century that Jews and their money ruled the world. But there were actually very few rich Jews. Most lived in poverty and struggled to survive. Jews were said to be super capitalists, guilty of all the world's misery.
This led in Eastern Europe to pogroms and massacres. In Western Europe, political parties sprang up that wanted to reintroduce discrimination against Jews. Darwin's theory of evolution and natural selection was also twisted to create a false science. Here we see an ape, a black person and a Jew all on the same line. A German who married a Jew or a black person would produce inferior children. It was Germans too who committed the 20th century's first genocide against the Hereros of Namibia. In the Belgian Congo of King Leopold, black people were considered a lower race, which opened the way to their inhuman treatment. Mass violence became even easier in the 20th century. During the First World War, the murderous potential of industry and technology were deployed on a massive scale. Millions of soldiers were slaughtered. Human life seemed to lose its value. In 1915, the German army used poison gas for the first time. The enemy was exterminated like vermin. This soldier holds a knife in his hand. His task was to stab to death the wounded survivors in freshly captured trenches. Germany surrendered in November 1918. Its defeat was immediately blamed on the Jews. That's how the country entered the 1920s and 30s, which is also where our exhibition begins. <laughs>